Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today, in this video, I'll be talking about what I learned from the development of Theme Park Tycoon, what mistakes we made, and what you can do to avoid these mistakes in your game. If you look at Theme Park Tycoon in its current state as a player, you'll see a fully playable game and see almost no issues other than a few bugs, maybe. But if you try to look at it from the perspective of a developer, it is a disaster. The project has gotten to such a mess to work with, it is near impossible to work with. And this came from one primary issue, the lack of planning. If you look at the development history, you will see that the game was off to a great start originally. Most of the primary features were done within a few days, but the game has been developed for four months. That's because it kept getting slower and slower and slower to add new features which is the opposite of what we want to have. And this came from the primary issue of lack of planning. But that's a bit broad and there are multiple different things within that which caused this to fail. When I say lack of planning, you can basically think of a lack of thinking what the game would do beforehand. And that leads to a lack of expandability. Now, what are some things you can do to avoid a lack of expandability in your game? I'm going to go over those things real quick and explain how they affected the development of our game and what you can do to avoid them. The first issue is going to be a issue that's a bit more obvious, and that being the lack of scope. When originally making the game, I had no idea of what upcoming features the game would have. I was just adding features by what came to mind and not making a system expandable for new features. Let's say you have an NPC system and designed just to match your needs, but then in a month in the future, you add a new feature to it, but it's not really possible without recoding 50% of the entire system. This was pretty common with the development of the game. And it might be in yours as well if you don't think about it. So how do you fix this? Well, that can be achieved by planning out all the features that the game will have first, or at least a majority. And it doesn't have to be super specific, but just have a general idea of what features you might add in the future. And even though they won't be implemented when you originally buy the game, you want to make it so that the original system will be easily modified to add these features without having to redo the entire system in the future when you do add these features. And the second issue that's being posed by having a lack of planning would be having a non centralized code base. There are almost a hundred different scripts in our project and lots of prod lots of functions being reused. So one function may be used across three different scripts. Now, an issue that's posed by this is what happens if you want to change one of the functions. Let's say a function that rounds a vector. Well, if you want to make it round up instead of just rounding, that means you'd have to go to all the different scripts, figure out which ones have the function and change it. That can take easily lots and lots of time, maybe even an hour or two. Now, let's say I do this 10 times of an update. That can easily increase the amount of time it takes to have an update by a few days, or to add a new feature by a few days. And that's probably doubling or tripling the entire time it takes that feature just by changing a few functions. And it shouldn't take that long, because it should take a few minutes because you all have to change the function once, right? So the way you can do that is by having a library. So you can have a library with a function in it and just change the function in library. And if you use the library in all your other scripts, then it makes it a lot easier as once again, you don't have to change one single function in one script as opposed to changing it in 20. It's not a big issue when you start off with the project, and you only may think it's just a few functions, it won't take that long. Once you get to a bigger project and a bigger scale, it gets very hard to manage and changing a single function can take a lot longer than a few minutes or a few seconds. The third issue is hacking methods. This isn't as closely related to lack of planning. It is in a way as you might implement one of these without thinking about it and without planning ahead but it is a major issue. Sometimes you may be in a rush and want to implement a feature quickly. 
you may use a hacking method instead of doing it the proper way. This can lead to lots of bugs in the future. We spend hours trying to redo the method and debug it and all that because now it's so deeply integrated into the game. A good example of this would be using the find object by name function. To find an object instead of using custom properties to use the data. In the short term, it is fine, but then what if by some chance you end up with another object of the same name? It can be disastrous and may take quite a bit of time to debug and fix. That can mean you might be saving two minutes originally by using the quicker function and not having to do a bit of more coding, but you end up using a few hours in the future trying to debug it and fix it. The fourth issue is messy code. This one is a bit more obvious, but lots of people still do it and myself included. Once again, when in a rush, you may write messy or uncommented code, which is fine at the time, you may look at it and understand it. But then what happens if you go to work on some other features and parts of the project for a month or two and not touch that code for some time? When you try to work with it again, it may be near impossible due to it not being clean or understandable. So to prevent this, just try to write your code to be clean and understandable and call it, no matter how simple it is. Simple fix, but it can go a long way. And it's very simple, a lot of people know this, but still don't do it. So just try to do it, I guess. And you can save lots of time if you write code clean and understandable the first time around. So now I want to go over some examples of a project that's being done to actually make it expandable. So using what I've learned from the original development of the Park Tycoon, I mean recording the entire game in a more expandable fashion. I mean this is a whole framework of it which will be publicly available as well with expandability in mind. So obviously it's a lot of script skin, but they're all very organized. You can ignore this one but everything else is script. So we have the main API, for example, and this has a whole bunch of stuff that allows us to re your everything up. Like, for example, a vector snapping function. So typically what we did in the last game is we had a this function, every single script that needed it. That was not good at all. If you wanted to change something, then it would require going to every single script and changing it. So see here, we just have it here, change it here. In general, these other centralized functions uh, so do stuff. Obviously, we have global variables, which some people like, some people dislike. That's up to you. But personally, I kind of like them. Enums as well, which obviously help make the code more understandable. So if you have the modes enum, so we can just check to see if the player's mode is enums.modes.placing or enums.modes.none, whatever, right? So you can just check which mode players and they have to use numbers or strings, which are more complicated sometimes. So as you can see here, we have the example of a util snapper node, I mean, a util script that snaps the node, right? So it's simple, which uses the WPI and snaps the vector, as opposed to having this entire function here doing a bunch of stuff. And considering we already had all this done, already had all this done, adding this simple thing was very quick. It would have been a bit longer if we did not have this. And let's look at another example. So how about the exit mode function, right? So you want to exit the current mode the player is in. Now, this can be complicated, right? If you want to start a mode, you may have a function that exists in mode, that it's, it's gonna be complicated, right? And the old version of we had was definitely showing that we had kinds of checks to which mode player is in. Trying to exit them was a pain, but here it's easy because we just had the exit mode. We can check if the active mode equals the API dot enums that modes are placing, and then we just call on the API dot mode dot placing to exit it, and we can go to the placing API, right? So mode underscore placing. And we can see that we have an exit function. And we just call it to exit the mode, as opposed to having to do some weird stuff to try to exit the mode without calling the API for the mode. And obviously this is a bit more complicated stuff. It's 
lots of this long variable names. We take that out of account and you can see that's pretty simple. So we just check the colliding nodes, call the API function, determine colliding nodes, with the position, divided by the tower size of the whole thing, which as we're trying to change in our same script, can just be changed as a single number here. So I think it's nice because it could be 50, or it's the number and change it to 10. You have the rotation. Once again, it looks complicated, but it's really just the preview again, the rotation, the data. So it's the data of the Ash object, which is done in here. We have data. Um, pretty simple. And size reduction. Another thing I want to cover real quick as well would be having extra parameters in a table, like optional parameters. So that way you don't have to have all kinds of weird stuff to get it working. So you can have like optional parameters that are in the table. It's like you should have like this, so you don't have to pass in a table, but you can pass one if you want. And obviously we can look into here and look at extra params. If extra params is undefined, let me just put an empty table. And if you don't have size reduction specified, we just have it set to zero. So that's a pretty simple way you can have it. So you can easily have optional parameters you can specify. And that was an issue with our original thing. We don't have this kind of system. We just had them all being passed in. So yeah, simple fix, but it goes a long way. So I think that pretty much concludes the explanation of what you can do to make your games expandable and what I learned from the original development of the game. Now I'm going to go into a quick look at the original game and just show you how complicated it is. We have just all these scripts for everything. We did start to use APIs a little bit although it's very uh, still not great though. Very far from great API. But let's go into base base item. And we have everything that's been different scripts as well. Like and we have um saying let's go to long hole to normal, you know, this stuff having a task rate and then putting it to placing and you can just see how fragile this code is. Like what happens if this task that is long enough, what does it even do? I don't know what it does. Um, why do we have to set mode to normal first and then to placing? I mean, what does that do? I mean, I'm, I probably have no idea. And it's just all this kind of stuff that is messy. Like having a while loop instead of having a task. Now I have to stop placing. I don't think there is a function to stop placing actually. And there's no easy way to remember either, is there? I guess underscore j.mo more is placing. Yeah, so I guess it's not too hard to change it, but it, it might break sometimes and it's very bad compared to this. You just have a active mode task and we just stop the task when we exit the mode, right? So we just cancel it. That's how you exit. That simple. Or if you want to start placing, we just cancel it originally as well, I think. But if you don't cancel it in the start, because let's assume that's already stopped, cancelled, but we uh, exit the mode and then start placing again as well here. So that's, I think that's a pretty good way of doing it, in my opinion. It's a lot easier to work with as opposed to having something like this, or I mean, you can just see how weird this stuff is. Um, all I want to say is definitely don't do this kind of stuff like what we did originally. And I gave some good, pretty good tips of how you can avoid that and what you should do to make your project expandable. Anyways, have a good day and thanks for watching.